So here we are now. We are in the era of mandated vaccines in four different cities, uh, notably New York, New Orleans, San Francisco. I'm not sure what the, the last city was, but uh, it, it may be three. I know that there were three announced. I know San Francisco and New York, and they're, they're mandating this. No medical exemptions in New York, as, as I've noted several times. And now we're at the point where they're saying you need, after eight months, a booster shot, which no, is— I'm going to get right on that. <laughs> well, well, here's, here, here's, here's, here's the first thing I always say, obviously, like for you, when you got vaccinated, you went to a doctor and yeah. it was a doctor you trusted. And yeah. you, 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 would you call him a conservative doctor? Uh, yes. I think that's between you and him. I got nothing yeah. to do with it. But exactly. I will say people got these vaccine cards. Did, did any of y'all ask why there were four lines on it <laughs> and you only needed two and that says other and other? Yeah, because they were always expecting there to be boosters. And to be honest, they even said this. They said we may require more in the future. It may become a seasonal thing. So, so here, here's, here's a point I want to make real quick. We already had one um, libertarian, I suppose, on Twitter say, if I had a choice between a facility with a mask mandate and a facility with a vaccine passport, I'd choose the vaccine passport because I'm already vaccinated. I like the choice. I like how he creates the choice right. where I can have this or I can have this abuse of my liberty or that abuse of my liberty. I'd rather take, you know, if I had to choose between gonorrhea and syphilis, I'd probably go with gonorrhea. And he says... That's, you know, that's he, the he, ultimate he, liber modern libertarian uh, right. conundrum. Reason.com. But he, he, yeah. he, goes, he goes on to say, <laughs> I'm opposed to all of the restrictions, but I would just choose that one. And that's exactly the point. Yes. They say, at first, look, just just get it. And, I, and my response is like, if your doctor wants it, it thinks you're, you should. You, you keep your medical decisions between you and a medical professional, not internet people or, or politicians. Yeah. And then what happens is because these people have all just gotten it, when, the, when, when it comes out that they're going to be mandating for all these businesses, they say... I don't care. I already got the vaccine, right? Yeah. Now what happens? Now you need a booster. And they say, well, I've already got the card and I've already done this much. I might as well just go and get the booster. What's The problem is it's incrementalization into authoritarianism. I got no problem with the vaccines. I got no problem to an even extent with like going to the countries requiring it. I went to Venezuela. I had to have a vaccine card. I had to go to the doctor, get it filled out. He signed it. I went to Venezuela. They said, show us proof you've got yellow fever and these other things. Yep. And I'm like, here you go. The problem is that in these cities, they're barring people in violation of their rights. And I don't know. What scares me is I don't see it as sustainable. So I guess I should say this. When you mentioned before that you think some people in Oklahoma will not stand for this kind of stuff, I actually should say people everywhere won't, even in New York City. I hope not. But I just, I, I'm not saying like, I actually, I actually think a decent amount of people everywhere will start becoming fed up with this. If you, if you look at New York, you can see that less than, uh, uh, it's about 56% of the people are vaccinated, which means right now, about half of New York City cannot use these services, yeah. these public accommodations. How long will that last until the system breaks? I, I, I think it is unsustainable. And, and remember, and it's not just the, it is a, a conglomeration of things. It is your children being taught that uh, because of their race, they are you know, either good or bad or <laughs> indifferent. It is uh, it is uh, America humiliated overseas in Afghanistan. It is four dollar fifty nine cent gas, which I've been paying in L.A. Wow. It is, uh, you know, it is people say, well, you know, maybe you don't need cheeseburgers because, you know, the weather in 100 years It is all these things where they suddenly, you know, the, the elite suddenly got a chance to kind of foist it's it's stuff on us and in seven months it's been a freaking disaster as we predicted and I, I i think people are just getting fed up now the thing that makes me one of the things that gives me hope i was alive when saigon fell i was 10 years old i remember it uh, i was very engaged as a kid uh in, in in news and current events and i i remember distinctly and i remember uh, feeling much like I'm feeling now, except now I didn't have friends who, you know, got shot in Afghanistan and are now wondering why they went and got shot. But uh, five years after Afghanistan or after Saigon fell, America elected Ronald Reagan and it started, you know, it, it, it gave us, you know, 11 years later, America was at its height of its power. And I was physically there at the place America was at its greatest power. I was at 7th Corps Main Command Post during Desert Storm, during the Land War. The greatest military force ever assembled, uh, the most decisive defeat of an enemy in all of military history, arguably, 
was uh, the uh, Allied attack in uh, uh, ground attack in Desert Storm. And I was a seven core main command post. I heard radio calls I later read about in books. So I was physically standing there at the America's greatest pinnacle of power, the undisputed power in the world. And it's been all downhill for 30 years from there. But it doesn't mean we can't go back. You know, a society can hit low points. You know, we can hit the, hit the depths of our biorhythm and still go back up. I'm optimistic, Tim. I'm always optimistic because I, you know, there, there's something about Americans. There's something about our Constitution. And these are unique and they are special. And I, I just... I just feel in my heart, and maybe I'm crazy and stupid, and maybe I'm idealistic. God help me. I thought that was surgically removed from me in law school. <clears throat> but I think we come back from this. But it's important that we understand how far down we are. It's like the alcoholic has to take, you know, inventory when he hits bottom. But during, uh, would you say that during the Vietnam era, the country was at this level of authoritarianism? No. Fracturing? Maybe. Political tribalism? Uh, somewhat. Remember, there was a full-scale terrorist, low-intensity, well, yeah, low-intensity uh, 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 conflict. Thousands of bombings in yeah. the early seventies. Mm -hmm. Thousands in the early seventies. I mean, they weren't killing people left and right, but they were kind of killing it people was, left. It, it was mostly shock and awe, wasn't it? Like, uh, a lot of it was. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of it were message bombings, but there were you know cops being shot down the street. Uh, the the capital was blown up. Uh, they tried to blow up a number of targets. Managed to blow up themselves, which. You know, that's a win-win. Um, uh, unfortunately, after after that, a lot of them were absorbed into academia. And uh, look, we... And then raised some kids who went on to become DAs in San Francisco. Yes, Chessa Bodine. Mm -hmm. yep. We... Um, the, what we need... What, look, here's what I'm afraid of, and here's what we need. We need not Ronald Reagan, but a Reagan-like figure who is willing to come in and push his agenda towards the kind of uh, civil right, civil liberties that we're talking about. Not exactly like Ronald Reagan, not the same policies, but a, a, a communicator who is forthright and focused. I am worried that what we're going to get is a real authoritarian because people are going to say, I can't take this chaos. Yeah, that's right. I can't take this so, chaos. And it, 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 was, there, there are three options. <clears throat> a free society where everyone has rights, a society where our authoritarian rules, a society where their authoritarian rules. I want number one. I can live with number two. Number three, it's war. Was Abraham Lincoln authoritarian? Yes. That's right. He was. Yes, and he was. And he was one of my heroes. He, he, his pic portrait was on my family's wall at my grandmother's house uh, in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, burned twice by the Confederacy, right down the road from Gettysburg, which is one of the first places I was taken as a kid. So, yes. A guy can be authoritarian and not necessarily authoritarian in context and in a limited way with the idea of coming War. back from it. James Buchanan, right? He, he was uh, the one who led us into uh, the Civil War, basically. Yeah, he was uh, the uh, Biden of his era. Exactly. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is Biden Buchanan. JBJB. JBJB. JB. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, no. Except I'm not sure Biden, uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure Buchanan was, uh, you know, Grandpa Badfinger, but let's leave yeah. his personal term But can we off. can we get like a, a numerologist now to like do the numbers and be like the correlation between the two? Well, let me, let me, it. let me text my phrenologist. There you go. And see what he's. So, it, so a lot of people were wondering if this period of Biden would be so bad that you will get a major, you know, blowout election in 2022 and 2024. I think with, you will. I mean, I'd like to say that, but I think I thought that in the past. You know, in 2018, I was like, wow. I was like, with, with, with how crazy the Democrats have gotten and how inconsistent and broken. And then we get the squad. Uh, you, know, you actually get more uh, uh, absurd. Look, the, the Democrat Party has been pulled to the left. The uh, Republican Party has been pulled uh, <laughs> to the patriotic uh, because for a long time, the Republican Party was you know, an establishment party. It was the party of the guy who pulled up and, uh, uh, you know, stepped out of his limousine and fired all you guys uh, who worked at the uh, carrier air conditioning plant and said, hey, your job's going to Oaxaca. Don't worry, we'll uh, teach you to code or something. Yeah. And he looks exactly like Mitt Romney, by the way. And look, the Republican Party ignored normal people, the guys who built this country, fed it, fueled it, fought for it. They ignored them. In, in, in favor of this giant corporate 
nightmare. I look, you 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 got to understand. I was a normal Republican. I I subscribed to the Weekly Standard before it became, you know, uh, the uh, Weekly Anti Trump. Before it became a Jeffrey Tubin uh, a Zoom <laughs> inspiration nice. material, um, and I. I, I only changed because of YC. I was not a supporter of Trump when he was running uh, before he ran before he won the primary. After he won the primary, I was a reluctant supporter. I became an active supporter when he proved himself. I, I supported going into Iraq. I support going into Afghanistan. I thought these were good ideas. I actually participated in a successful nation building operation in Kosovo. Very different situation, though. I changed my mind, because, my mind because the facts changed. And I love what these guys on Twitter are like, you know, you know, 10 years ago, you had different ideas. Yes. Yes. <laughs> when when things changed and I, I reevaluated in, under new facts, yes, I changed my mind. You, you have correctly assessed what I have done. Good point. Aces. You are correct. And I don't delete the old stuff. Oh, yeah. Several years ago, I didn't own any guns. Now I own many. Oh. Now I got a Barrett M82. Nice. I think that's really Holy funny. crap. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you got bears around here? Bears. Yeah, we do, yeah. Actually. That, that's not for bears. <laughs> I mean, it could happen. Well, it, bears, daddies, you know, otters. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, uh, no, it's just, you, you have a, I, I went, I remember I was talking to uh, someone who posted on Facebook some meme like, there's no reason to own any weapon. They said, no, no self-respecting hunter would ever use an assault weapon. And so then uh, uh, I responded. not a hunter. I responded with like showing like a, you know a polymer tip uh, 450 Bushmaster versus like a, a nine millimeter which is used in combat or like a 556, and then I'm like, which one do you think the hunter uses? They use the stopping power yes. for large animals, and I was like, your argument makes no sense. But the interesting thing was they came back with like, oh the right wing gun nuts, no one's taking your guns. Here's a list of my guns that have been banned already, and like and and then he responded with, what do you need any of those for? And so I actually said, I'm going to engage this guy in good faith. And I had a list. I said, okay. And then I explained the purpose of every gun, like barrel length, caliber, like hunting, a small game. Like I got a, a break action 410. For, it's like a turkey shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we have wild turkeys sometimes. We don't really, we don't use it here. But when you go to West Virginia, you got to get rid of some of the turkeys because they're a pest if there's yep. too many. Then you got to, then you get something more powerful if there's wild boars infesting an area. Deer can become a very b big problem. Yep. And then you have home defense. Mm. Yes. You've got different, uh, you know, options there. And then I was like, we'll put the M82 at the bottom. We'll come back to that one later. And then I said, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then my response to that one was because I have a right to own it and it's none of your business. Yeah. Because outside of anything else, I can easily explain the function of these things. This one, it's just it's mine. Yeah, I, I, I want it. Which is another grounds for not taking the vaccine. Why don't you want the vaccine? Because I don't. Done. D argument over. That that see, people don't understand about rights, Tim. They think that rights are just uh like a brand of like special privilege. But if you, you know, a pri you know, if you have a really good reason, though, the right has to give way. And as I, I, I said before, a lot of these people have the whole rights responsibility thing. Like, uh, what is his name? Uncle Ben in Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. No, no. The idea of rights is no responsibility. Rights are a given. Otherwise, they're not rights. They're just privileges. And we've seen what you would do with privileges. The Founding Fathers said that we have, uh, you know, it's, it's self-evident. We have we have inalienable rights yes. that uh, were granted to us by our creator. Yes, Meaning, we can do them even if you think it's a bad idea. And they'll try and stop you. Yes. And even with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, they still infringe upon all of them, oh, even yeah. though the Founding Fathers outlined that these shall not be infringed, but here we are. And one of the biggest disasters of our uh, uh, institutions is the Supreme Court failing to aggressively police attacks on our rights. Every time they pass on a... Uh, you know, you can't sing in church. They have, or, they have or, no power. Or, 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 well, I, the Supreme Court is, is meaningless. The, the Supreme Court would have had some moral authority if it stood up for the things it should. Then people would listen. Now people are like, well, you know, Kavanaugh is just going to roll over because yeah, he's got to go to the country club. Yep. A, a guy I don't Do you know understand what, because if they did that to me, holy crap, it would be a jihad. So uh, we, we, they would be my project. I think it was Will Chamberlain who told us that the reason the Supreme Court doesn't get aggressive on some of these cases is because they have no enforcement ability. And if they push hard on something, it will reveal the emperor has no clothes, which it has. When the Supreme Court yes. ruled that the eviction moratoriums yep. were illegal completely in every sense, yep. and the CDC has no authority to do it, then Biden said, 
I did anyway. Do it anyway. Yeah, whatever. Screw the Supreme Court, right? That's my, my issue with rights being inalienable. I mean, the way it's written is they can't ta- inalienable. They can't, ta- can't be taken away. They're there. But like the reality, like that's kind of the myth we tell ourselves. The reality is if someone with a lot of weapons wants to just say this is a new world with new sets of well, rights and laws and ideas, then that is what it is. Well, simply because rights can be violated doesn't make them not rights. It makes somebody a, a violator of rights and you have a moral obligation to resist. No, no, right. right look, people are going to want to take what's yours. You may well, have so, a right so, to uh, it, but they're going to want to take Ian, it. Ian, do you think people have a right to express themselves freely? It depends on the situation. So that's, is that a no? Yeah, if you're, if you're out in the woods and if you make a sound, the, the, the panther knows where you are and will rip your throat out, then no, you don't, you don't have that right. Well, yeah, you have the ability. You, you have the right, you just got to defend it. Right, which is why you need that Bushmaster. But I mean, the reality is we're we're squishy bodies. But like, that, I don't I don't think you understand what a right means, right? So yeah, like, exactly, we got to define should, what that should, even means. Should, if, if if somebody wanted to speak freely, should they be stopped? Well, it depends on the situation. If you're so, going so to alert people to your are, presence, then yeah, they should be stopped. I'm just saying, like, okay, so there are circumstances in which you think people shouldn't be allowed to express exact, themselves. Yes, right. I don't I don't agree with that. I think people have a right to express themselves no matter what. Well, the consequences, the, military. You, the consequences are their choice. There's a difference between saying, well, you might give away your position. It's like, okay, well, you, you, you're allowed to do it. That's your decision, not mine. And I'll uh, tell you this. And if I'm standing next to you and we're in the woods and you want to start screaming at the top of your lungs, I have a right to walk away. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, Ian, you go ahead yeah, and do it. Yeah, but if my I'm screaming is going to get us killed, then... I will leave. No. It, um... my, my, your, my rights are more important than your life. And it's not even close. And no offense. But my rights are more important than your... They're also more important than my life. I will not live where I cannot speak freely, where I cannot worship as I see fit. I will not live that way. What about the right... I will die before I do What that. about the right to pursue happiness? That's not a right. That's, that, is this, that is a, that is, that is a, a, a preamble... R- rights are specific. I see. You have yeah. the life, right and liberty, and the freely. pursuit of happiness. That, that's, and it, that was a that was like a, a conveyance of feeling about what their goal was. Not they didn't they didn't make the First Amendment the right to pursue happiness. Right. Yes. It's nebulous and vague and can't be enforced. Yes, and 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 the Bill of Rights is not the only rights. It simply it's, expects some. Uh, in fact, they thought many many people thought we don't need a Bill of Rights. This stuff's obvious. I well, mm. thank, thank the was it the anti federalists. Uh, I don't remember. It's one I, of I, them. I think it was the anti federalists who were like, ah, we're not giving you that power. It's got to be outlined. In fact, I think there was originally seventeen in the Bill of Rights, and they decided to combine some, remove some, and boy, did they screw up the second. You know why? Because the original article that they wrote up actually said, even if you are not a part of a militia, your right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But they were worried that if they included that. People would use it as an argument to avoid conscription. So they said, let's just say you have the right to be there. Let's, let's just give the uh, damn Brady group uh, some to try and hang its stupid it doesn't hat ma- on. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, though. You know why? Because without still clear. Without culture, it's meaningless. Oh, of course. That's my Completely. point. Look rights, right. have to be, look, rights have to be defended and enforced. But no, 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 Ian, I'm not saying that your rights don't exist. I'm saying that if you don't have a culture that's willing, that's going to agree with you or recognize your rights— then the Constitution, the Constitution doesn't grant you your rights. It tells the government not to infringe upon these specific rights. Right, but if, it was, if there, you have a culture that says we'll infringe anyway, be prepared to defend but, your rights. But it was the the fathers, the founding fathers, that decided which rights are inalienable. No, it wasn't they, like no, those no, were no, actually no, 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 no. It wasn't no. like God no, like, they channeled didn't. it for no, these. That, no, they didn't, Ian. No. They yeah. said let's create a list of rights to stop the government from infringing. Yeah. They even say that rights that aren't included are not are, are, are it, just because they didn't include in the Bill of Rights. It doesn't mean you don't have those rights. Right. They were like, let's pick the best like outline for the what it is to live ones. in like a human yeah this society the and they agreed ones. on it these are puritan puritan christian white men that agreed on a set of rights well no. does it mean that no. they're the only rights or that they're the best rights no ian you are wrong they didn't all agree on what rights were in fact there was an argument well, over whether or not they'd have a bill of rights mm-hmm. what they said was we have rights then which ones do we put in out of 17 they get down to 10 and they said these are the ones that protect the country and they negotiated and compromised there were many people who felt there were some rights you should have and some rights you shouldn't have some people were 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 slave owners and some people were abolitionists. They clearly did not agree. So I'm just, what, I guess th- some cultures might have a bill of rights that say you have the right to three wives. Yeah, but they're wrong. Well, who says though? That's our, our, I, 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 our, our military. Our who, constitution does not say you have a right to anything. Yes, that's correct. 
No positive rights. It, it does. It says no, it these doesn't. these rights are yours. No, no it, it doesn't. Our the government can't no, infringe on them. Right. The, and the, the, the government will, rights, cannot infringe on our these rights. Our rights are negative rights. Mm-hmm. When the, the rights that the enumerated rights, that is the ones that are specifically set out because those are not the only ones. They're specifically reserve other rights. The enumerated rights are all negative. The they Bill say, of Rights, you're saying. The Bill of Rights, they are all negative in the sense that they, uh, the government cannot infringe on these. There are no rights that you have to something. You have no right to a house or a job or to my labor but in or saying, to pronouns. In saying they have the obligation to not infringe on that right, they're essentially saying you have that right. Yeah. So they no, are they're giving acknowledging, us rights. No, they, well, the rights come from God. That's what it says. It's written in that it's like God it, said, it, it, and it's it, like, come on, guys. Well, I don't think you understand the philosophy God's, of what the— I God think you, gave it. Ian, I think it'd be really important that if you're well, going— where to, else would rights you, come well, from? Ian, a you gun. Need, Ian, you need to actually like read some theology and some religion to understand what they're saying, because I think the, the problem here is that you fundamentally don't understand the philosophy behind inalienable rights. You seem to think that some guys read a Bible and just arbitrarily decided something because you don't understand what it means to have intrinsic, inherent value. Well, I human. see that there is value to it. I, I acknowledge like the free speech is legit, but it's also subjective to our society and our culture right now. Now, I can't, a right can't be subjective. A right is inherent to every human being. And, you know, even even the victim of the Taliban who's got an AK-47 to his head has a right to speak freely, even if someone's going to blow his head off because he does it. Uh, and when I say the rights come from God, I, look, I, look, I'm a religious guy. There are people who aren't religious who just under, who are humanists. They'll call themselves humanists and say that as a human being, I have these rights. And, you know, at the end, the, the effect is uh, similar in that they are a given. They are outside debate. You cannot debate the right to do it because the right exists. That's why I reject all these balancing tests. Well, you know, Tim, it's important that you uh, have free speech. But, you know, if your speech is harmful, well, look, speech is uh, the only speech that matters. The only time rights matter is when it's harmful or forbidden or unwanted or unreasonable. Otherwise, it doesn't you don't need a right. You, you, it's a, I, I think you know no one will care. There, there's there 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 are certain rights that are actually universal. In fact, um, you know, uh, in all in all cultures, you know, the right. Well, the, I, I, there are basic like tenets that allow us to survive as a species better, and I think a lot of those are codified in the U.S. Constitution. But for people to realize, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm afraid that people are going to rely and be like, "These are my rights. This paper says so. So no one can touch me." And like, dude, you have to fight what, to, yeah, no. to, if you want those to be real, Boy, we're you, on, you need to struggle. We're mm-hmm. on the same sheet of music mm-hmm. there. And that's, you know, that's, that's why I believe every American should own guns. Mm-hmm. That's why I th- believe every American should be uh, trained to participate in the defense of our community Maybe. and constitution. And well, so, uh, 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 I mean, there's the serious challenge, though, of what happens when the bus pulls up for the Australians and says, you know, we're going to be taking you and relocating you to the alternative uh, quarantine hub, to the relocatable campsite. <laughs> we're going to be color coordinating, you know, your outfits and yeah. your and your and your uh, cabins. Yeah, so unfortunately, that w- they're going to finish their fosters and get on board. Mm-hmm. They actually I don't think they have fosters in Australia. I think they have Fosters in Australia. I don't think so. No, I think it's I think like I think it's like the uh, the uh, old Milwaukee. Of no, I'm pretty Australia. sure it's not there. I have friends from Australia, and they're like, we don't have that. You don't have Fosters? I don't. With a big can? Yeah, Sydney, I'm pretty sure that's not. That's Sydney Watson, thing. can you can yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This? <laughs> she said they don't. You're from have Australia. Okay. I, always, I always make that joke, uh, or not, like a half joke, to my Australian friends. I'd be like, oh, so you guys like drink Fox, Fosters like Budweiser, and they're like we don't have that. It's American. And I'd be like, really, really. Okay. But maybe. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.